Turn off your flashlights. Huh? I said, turn them off, damn it. Well, that's like going on an adventure <laughs> with your daddy. You know? <laughs> I mean, which he is. Yeah. yeah. But it is yeah. Like Boss, that comes, I got that flashlight. I got that flashlight. Shit, there's movies in here. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, H.P. Lovecraft. H.P., you, you're a fan of H.P. Lovecraft. I like some of his works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's trying to say, like, man, you try to say some Yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I just asked. I'm very careful because you, yeah. you tested it on Martin. You're like, your boy, H.P. Lovecraft. You went to Chris. Now, Chris, let's see what you have to yeah. say. <laughs> your, your, your white racist brethren. <laughs> of course you like his shit. I really like At the Mountains of Madness. His old racist ass horror <laughs> stories out there. Uh, H.P. Lovecraft, man. H.P. H. Lovecraft, he gave us. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. It's coming from somebody who's black. You know, uh, H.P. Lovecraft gave us some legendary horror stories. And out of all those creatures, out of all those those monstrosities, he still considered the most horrible thing out of all of it, black people. His long head ass. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like one of his creations. I can you feel know, have been comparing that photo to Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> oh wow Jesus Christ You're right I never realized that before Shit it's like it, I can see it If you yeah. took Mark Zuckerberg And combined it with Stonehenge <laughs> <laughs> Like so many creators uh, Like during that time Like he did not Like people didn't Start to appreciate his works You know the, the ones that Aren't as racist Until yeah. long long after yeah. Decades later And they mad, They inspired better people Yeah mm. He was a big fan of Uh Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, you know? yeah, you got another guy. Hey, look, I, I, I tell you, man, I'm, I'm, I've read one of his stories. I got a collection. I've read, uh, you know, I'm, I'm reading. I've read one and a half of his stories. I'm in the middle of reading one right now. Perhaps one of his uh, most famous ones, uh, the Call of Cthulhu. Uh, you know, but looking at this, what we have here today, what, why are we talking about H.P. Lovecraft with his old racist ass? Well, because we are talking about Lovecraft Country. You know. The, you're looking at this, that's probably why at this moment, somewhere, the corpse of H.P. Lovecraft is probably screaming in his grave right now. It's, it's really sad that he's not alive to see I know. this. Yeah. I know. I know. You know, he's probably like somewhere trying to claw his way out of this grave. <laughs> you know! No! <laughs> Knowing that they made a, a show with his name headlining where the main stars are black people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 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 protagonist, the, the protagonist of the show. I think he'd probably even be impressed. He'd be like, you know what? Uh, you know, besides all these black people in here, this is not not too bad. What you do with my themes? Uh, you know, this is a, this is a, a a series where they've woven his themes into the stories. Are these stories about people of color, black people, uh, that experience supernatural adventures, but also the most frightening thing that's interwoven these themes are racism, racism itself. Uh, this is based on the book Lovecraft Country by Matt Ruff. The series is centering on an army vet, a guy named Atticus Freeman. There he is right there. Uh, goes by Tick for short. Gets a letter about his father missing in a place called Arden County. Now, Arden County is already a creepy place, but is especially dangerous for black people. Pretty much a sundown town. You don't know what a sundown town is. Well, that's where they pretty much tell you, nigga, get out of here by the sun goes down. By, by the time the sun goes down, because once it disappears, we, not that we want to, you know, but it's we we are pretty much uh uh it's our duty it, we're, to we're, hang you. We're obligated to either put you in jail or hang or you. kill you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's joined by his uncle George and his childhood friend Letty. And they set off to find his father, Montrose Freeman. Now, along the way, Tick actually discovers that he comes from a long lineage that makes him a very important part of a group of racist-ass wizards. <laughs> <laughs> People say, what, that's the Ku Klux Klan, right? <laughs> no, I mean, they, they do have grand wizards. <laughs> no, 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 not the grand with no actual uh, Patronum-ass wizards. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're racist wizards, so I guess they're Death Eaters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. And he's a very integral part of this ceremony that they got going on. And people, that is just the start. 
right? Yes. <laughs> was that? I was shocked by that. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, we're all getting all right into it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, we wrapped it up in two episodes. Well, yeah. well, People, that, oh, no. <laughs> that is just the beginning. <laughs> that's, like an, that's, that's like an episode one and two. Yep. Uh-huh. And it just gets crazier from there. Now, whether that's a good thing or not, we're going to find out. At least from our point of view, we're going to find out as we watch the trailer for Lovecraft Country. And we'll be right back with our review. I told you to stay away from that damn place. Man, that's when she gets crazy. A, a hundred box of cream of wheat. <laughs> <laughs> that would be some scary shit for black people with an Uncle Ben's man just following you around the room. <laughs> like a Scooby-Doo portrait. <laughs> It's our family story. So this is coming out this Friday. We were able to get access to the first five episodes of this, which gives you a good idea of uh, of what this is like. And I gotta tell you, even I've I've, I've read the book. Mm-hmm. So and I know uh, you said this Friday, but won't it be Sunday? Oh, I'm sorry, Sunday. Yeah, because yeah. Sunday night is when they do their big, you know. Like if they got, got a premiere series, Sunday is when they'll No, come you're on. right. It is coming out this Sunday. I'm sorry. So a week from today mm-hmm. when this is airing right now. Uh so we got the first five episodes. And I gotta tell you, and this is not me like I read the book, so let me tell you something, because they changed a lot, but I'm gonna tell you this much. That first five episodes gives you a good idea of what this show is like, but I'm gonna let you know it gets even more insane. Does it? <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, it gets way crazier <laughs> okay. than what mm. you got. More like shit, I ain't scared. <laughs> bring it on. No, no, bring it on. I'm 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 digging it. This really is a big fuck you to HP Lovecraft. <laughs> yeah. Boy, it, howdy. I mean, thank you. <laughs> like if they could dig his corpse up and put his ass in a chair and uh-huh. have him watch this shit. <laughs> <laughs> have him strapped down so the yeah, corpse yeah. is constantly yeah. trying to move. And he wrote a story called Reanimator. If they could reanimate his ass, <laughs> reanimate him and bring him back and make him watch this and just sit there screaming, no, no, these black people, no. No, I'm a black creation. <laughs> It's such a f you to HP Lovecraft that, and I'm, it's not a spoiler. This is the first like five minutes mm-hmm. of the movie. Probably the first two minutes. Cthulhu, the biggest, baddest motherfucker in the HP Lovecraft universe, comes in and gets his ass whooped by Jackie Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'll be mean, split his ass in two with a baseball bat. <laughs> It sounds crazy, y'all. I know it does, and I don't. I won't say any more. But trust me, it all makes sense when it comes together. But while this borrows a lot from uh, H.P. Lovecraft's themes, as we've been saying over and over again, you are exactly correct with this. And I was telling you about while I was digging on this book so much because, listen, you know, all of us are geeks in this room. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, all of us, uh, we you know, we grew up on comic books and animation and dorky stuff and. You know that's what this is. Uh, that's what this is really about, man. While it borrows a lot from Lovecraft's themes, this is really about genre literature, horror, uh, 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 sci-fi, adventure serials. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know the things that shaped American pop culture to what it is today, yeah. mm-hmm. but excluded certain groups, right? Especially black people. And but you know now now. That, we get to see them and they get to see themselves thrust into the adventures like the ones that they've read about in books. You know, the show opens up with uh <clears throat> with with uh Tick. What's that actor's name? He's with Jonathan the, Majors. Jonathan Majors, man. It opens up with Atticus talking about how he's reading this book. John Carter of Mars, Edgar Wright uh Edgar Wright's Burroughs. You know, a uh, a hero that goes to Mars and helps leave uh leads them there since uh he couldn't save slavery on earth. <laughs> he was a Confederate soldier. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, and he's talking to this woman. She's like, you're reading about a Confederate soldier who goes to the Mars and saves people. He's the hero. And he's just like, well, fuck, that's all we got. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and we can relate to that, man, because, I mean, shit, you, uh, you, you knew we grew up with Martin. You know, I mean, we, 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 when we didn't have a whole lot of things to, like, entertain us less than we have now, we didn't have the internet. You know, all we had really was television and movies. We took whatever they gave us. Sure. Even two fucking rednecks riding around in a goddamn <laughs> racist car. 
Look at this guy. Look at this. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> The dudes of Harris, they, they would even like, I mean. I, I, I drew the line at that one. <laughs> shit, not, not, not us, man. It was all kind of kids I grew up with who loved. See, you were older than I was. Yeah. And we, you know, I, grew, I went to school with black kids who had lunch kits of these two <laughs> rednecks. And they were, and they were redneck as <laughs> too. Modern day Robin Hood. Started <laughs> <laughs> fucking, got that redneck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody had a thing for Daisy Duke. You know Daisy Duke probably cried rape about five, <laughs> cried rape around five black dudes got them killed. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, them Duke boys probably strung them up. You know, these guys, and the, the, the characters in this story, it's uh, it's amazing how they bring in all those different genres and put those characters in there. Because this, this is pitched as a horror series, but really, uh, again, it goes through all those genres. Uh, Sci-fi, mm -hmm. horror, it's yeah. very gory, very gory. Yeah. But then they get into like adventure uh, yeah. uh, uh, stuff, man. You know, they they they, they got an episode here. Uh, well, the, it it looked like uh, the, Indi the Indiana Jones episode. It looked yeah, it looked like uh, it looked like black people broke onto the set of Pirates of the Caribbean at night, <laughs> 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 just start fucking around. <laughs> you didn't get to see that episode. I've only seen two. Oh yeah, but there's there's the whole. Episode where it's a combination of Indiana Jones, National Treasure, yeah. The Mummy. Uh, wow. what's, what's the one? The, the Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code <laughs> and Pirates of the Caribbean, man. Yeah. All that in one episode. And again, it sounds like it doesn't make sense, but it does. And, you know, it's really cool uh, uh, to see these characters be able to, like, act out these adventures, even though they're, they're in grave danger the whole time. Turn off your flashlights. Huh? I said, turn him off, damn it. Well, that's like going on an adventure with your daddy. You know? <laughs> I mean, which he is. Yeah, right? yeah. But it is yeah. Like Boy, I said, come to that goddamn flashlight. Come to that goddamn flashlight. <laughs> Shit, there's movies in here. <laughs> <laughs> See them goddamn spiders back there? Come to that goddamn light. <laughs> there's booby trap stuff in here, boy. <laughs> Shit, well, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going down there. <laughs> I do love how they, they, they're they in these situations. You know they have to keep going, but they have very natural reactions to these things that you never get to see yeah. anybody ever have. I was always, always like, all right, well, let's go. I, I, you go first. And this is more like a, oh, shit. <laughs> yes, it was. Like, shit, both of them. Hey, hey ain't no. I, that's a, you could look they ain't cowards, but they ain't stupid either. Right. They ain't some Indiana Jones. They just step in head first and like, oh, well, we'll see what happens. They're like, no, nah, f*** that. <laughs> Shit, we, we lucky to get this far being black. <laughs> Shit, Martin heard that noise. He's looking at him. No, I'm letting it play because it has like one of those natural reactions you were talking uh -huh. about. This is some drink to the center of the earth type shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ain't Anna Jones would have been like, what do we have here? He's right. like, man, this is some journey to the center of the earth type shit here. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they're in constant danger, when they're doing this adventurous stuff right here, there's almost like a an underlying feeling of giddiness as they do it because they're like, you know, yeah, we might die, but we're living out these adventures that we mm -hmm. that we only read about. And not only now are we getting to see ourselves, you know, represented, but we are actually in it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of cool seeing that. Oh, yeah. The real horror here is the racism. They don't like outsiders at all. Travelers being attacked in the surrounding woods. And those aren't attacks always by creatures or monsters. Those mm -hmm. are attacks by racist and corrupt cops. Mm -hmm. You know, again, being in sundown towns where they say, you know, I sure would have to hate to hang you, boy, when the sun goes down, but I'm obligated to do that. Well, they know. That's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they're smiling while they say it. Yeah. They're playing with their food. That's what they're doing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, the, you know, we would- This they, guy. <laughs> oh, this fucking guy. This guy played this role so well. He, too. Did, he did a really good job. That's like Sam Rockwell good. It's like, okay, you might be a racist. <laughs> yeah, it's like, man, yeah. <laughs> Some of Bob, you're just too good at it. <laughs> Michael Fassbender. Yeah, Michael Fassbender. Right. Michael, yeah, I still ain't forgave <laughs> Michael Fassbender. No, he was great, though. But this, this guy's great, man. Mm -hmm. And he, and he, the reason why this guy's great, and I can't remember the actor's name, but the reason why he's great is because he is adding like this extra level of, uh, of sinister to it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Like yeah. he really is the creature here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you aren't as scared by the creatures because there's this air of menace that's around them all the time. I was watching this with uh, I was watching this with my with my wife, and my brother in law came by. He came by to watch this too because he, he was curious and wanted to see it. And they were watching it, and this scene where, again, they were trying to get out of town before the sun went down, and the cops were chasing them mm-hmm. and tormenting them the whole time. They were watching that, and they were on the edge of their seats, man. They were sweating watching this, and they were angry watching it. And then at some point later, these big-ass, slimy, man-eating, tentacled-ass creatures come up, and my wife and brother-in-law are like, oh, thank God, sweet relief. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's, it's, I felt the same thing. I, yeah, it, it's so weird, but, I mean, you know what? Jordan Peele did, his, uh, did a great job, kind of a similar comparison to Get Out. Mm-hmm. Like, when the cops arrive in any horror film, it's like, oh, thank God, they're here. But then when you see the cops and, like, Get Out, it's, like, even worse, yeah. you know, because you know that that's going to be a horrific situation. So when the monsters got there, it's like, okay, they're finally saved <laughs> from the racist police officers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The they have a better chance with them than but, the police. Yeah, that's right. The creatures yeah. want to kill everybody, but right, they're just right. kind of like, nah, man, you're the fucking heroes right now. You got a chance now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, 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 demons and ghosts and, and and supernatural creatures, you know, for the most part. Maybe you believe in that, maybe you don't, but we don't see it coming out. It's not active every day. Sure. Yeah. You don't cut on the news and see, like, demons and ghosts having fucking riots and trying to kill people and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, with this, you know, you... Today we look out the window. Today we turn on anything. We see the, the the real terror of what racism is. That's why watching this is very effective for today. It's oh, scary as yep. fuck. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it, it it does a great job of of blending all the things that we're scared of. Uh, yeah, r- real, you know, a- a- and imagined. Um, and at the same time, the racism isn't so oppressive that it's not about anything else. Because one of my favorite things is that with all of these characters, these these black characters, you get to see them have fully realized lives mm-hmm. where, you know, they aren't always being terrorized. They're living like real people. You feel like you have a sense of their history and what they do on a regular basis. So then when they step out and the racism to come back in, it's such a, oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah, Exactly. Yeah, man, because they always, that's the thing, man. They can go on all these big adventures and whatnot. They can escape creatures. They can escape ghosts. They can run away from hunting houses for a little while, but they always got to live mm-hmm. in a country that terrorizes them mm-hmm. yeah. at a time where it was very, very, you know, it's worse than, very much worse than it is right now, mm-hmm. uh, especially in the South. But, you know, this also works as a drama. You know, we're talking about all the other elements. Yeah. This also works very much as a drama, you know, because you were talking about how. Uh, you were talking about how these characters have lives that they live before they get into into uh, any of this fantastical stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, no, it, it very much works as a drama. I, I'm caught up in what's going on just between the characters, even outside of the racism and even outside of the supernatural. Yeah, they're well developed characters, man. That's one of the reasons why you actually care for them. I mean, yeah, they're being, you know, they're they're, they're in the middle of dangerous situations or the target of racism, but you feel for them. Uh, Jonathan Majors is a uh, Atticus right here. You know, you see him. Big ass dude, big muscular dude, but you can still see he's a geek. Nerd. Oh yeah, yeah, he's a big ass nerd. They constantly bring it up too. Like you, you used to be that kid with those Coke bottle glasses. They st- <laughs> and they still look him at that. Way. Oh, yeah. He's like, I not still got way. him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great leading man. Yeah. I would say that. And you know, he's and he loves the the real pulpy stuff too. He mm. loves all those 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 geek adventures and sci fi and horror stuff. He's you know he he used to be part of the of of the sci fi club when he was a kid. That's right. You know. Uh, but you know, other than that, he's also got this real troubled, complicated history. He's a, he's a, he was in the Korean War. There's something going on with him there. We we don't know mm-hmm. something you know uh, really tormenting him. And he's got a really complicated and somewhat tumultuous relationship with his father, played oh, by Michael K. Tumultuous. Williams. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who has, and I can see why he's angry. He's just carrying him out a bag of secrets and torment uh-huh. with him. He's <laughs> that dude yeah. got a lot of baggage. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Every time he's on, <laughs> it's it's like more secrets just kind of drop. Like, <laughs> it's like God, I damn. didn't want to ask you what all is in that bag. You almost want to freeze the movie, like pause, and like okay, is this something you want to tell me? Anything else? <laughs> God damn it, we done been through all these changes with you. Now come on, man. Michael K. Williams is Montrose, man. His dad. He's uh, Michael K. Williams is already great. Oh yeah, yeah. Journey Smollett, man. Is that how you say Journey? Yeah. Journey. Journey. Smile at Bell. Spunky! <laughs> Fine as hell, too. Uh, a lot of fun, that character, man. Admire her independence. She's one of those people, 
that you like a lot until you realize she's always coming around because she wants something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I honestly expected her to be a two-dimensional character that would be on for an episode and be gone. And I, I'm glad she's sticking around and we're finding out more about her. Well, she's cool because she she actually is very smart and saves people a lot. Mm-hmm. She's almost like that video game character that you want to have on your team. <laughs> yeah. You know, because they'll, they'll get you out of situations when you get into trouble. I do appreciate that most of the characters, at least that what I've seen so far, are yeah. pretty competent. Competent, yes. Yeah, like no one is just like, oh, that one's always going to get someone in trouble. They make mm-hmm. a dumb decision. Like everyone's actually making really smart choices throughout this. And that was kind of refreshing in a genre show. Yeah. yeah, that is true, man. Like, look, everybody has flaws. Yeah. I mean, she's smart. She's like, uh, she's courageous. But like I said, she just gets on people's fucking nerves because she's always coming around. You got a dollar. <laughs> you know, yeah. hey, can I stay with you for a couple of days? <laughs> you know, she's always coming around wanting something. And it strained her relationship with her half brother and sister. Mm-hmm. They always get into arguments. And they're right. They're like, yeah. You know, because they, she's like, hey, I, was, I just came around thinking that we could bond for a moment. Mm-hmm. You know, let's sing a song together. Oh, by the way, you got a bed I can sleep in? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I, knew I knew it with it. you. <laughs> I knew it. God damn it, I knew it. Her sister, Ruby, which we just talked about, that actress, won me Mosu, what, what, uh, Mo, Mosku, I think is her name. She's just tired of everybody's shit. <laughs> you know, she, <laughs> tired of the world. She just, yeah. She said, black or white, I'm tired of all you motherfuckers out there, man. She's like, I'm a, I'm a thick, dark, black-skinned woman. You know, uh, uh, I, I'm just, I get shit from everybody, mm. and I'm just tired of it. You know, that's why she's so short with her sister. But her story takes uh, some very interesting turns. What I like about her story, at least for what I've seen these five episodes, is that there's something going on with her that they don't even, like, verbalize or mm-hmm. put out there. But there's something that you can kind of read into her. Mm-hmm. I won't say where it is. But she's been having some problems, man. You can see, like, she's just tired of a certain part of her life. You know, the villains. What do you think about the villains? Uh, uh, again, with the, with the villains, initially I was like, all right, well, you're villains. <laughs> but, but by the time we're at episode five, I'm like, all right, I'm kind of into these villains. I'm, I'm, they, they got their own <laughs> infighting and drama going on. Yeah. So now I'm intrigued by all that, too. Yeah. yeah. I'm not as far as you guys with this. So I was only able to watch two episodes. And uh, yeah, we we're introduced, I guess, the, the main villains of the series by episode two. Mm-hmm. And uh, I kind of felt like, man, they were going so fast. <laughs> and, and like, okay, I was like, oh, it's gonna be, this is going to be the entire series. Uh-huh. This is what's going to be about them and their relationships. Are like, oh, okay, I guess that's over now. And so what I think is going to be the main villains, I was like, I was kind of left wanting. I was like, I didn't get, I didn't think they got really it's, any, it's any time. Oh, it's not there. Okay, no, that's good. Yeah. I can only yeah. say about the episodes I've seen, but I don't know, they, they just felt very generic to me so far. And, um, yeah, I you can know. see that. Yeah, yeah. no, no, by, by episode two, I, I thought the same thing. Okay. But they, they keep doing more stuff, especially good. with her. I imagine so. Yeah. yeah. But, but other than, you know, her, I thought that was, there was a big there. reveal in episode five. I yeah. was like, okay. the fuck? Look, let me just say this, yeah. you know. It uh, just feels very fast already. Well, I'll tell you this. Yeah. It gets better because. Okay. You know, the thing that, that, they, that you start to see, you know, what one thing scarier than racist white people, white people with magic. Yeah. Who yeah. might be racist? Well, they, they, they established that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I forgot the, uh, uh, I forgot the, the, the character's name, but that's Abby Lee Kershaw, who looks like a, a, a real life mythical creature herself. She looks like a, something about the Dark Crystal. Or, yeah, uh, very unearthly. Oh my looks, God, you're right. She looks like a Gelfling. A Gelfling, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or at least an elf or something. Miss Braithwaite. Miss Braithwaite. I forgot her first name. Yeah, I forgot her first name. Yeah, Charlotte or something like that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, her and her uh, assistant, man, uh, played by her assistant William, played by Jordan Patrick Smith. That guy's on Vikings. Uh, he, he, okay, he looks Norwegian. He, yeah, yeah straight I like, up. I was like, okay, this guy, he looks like a, what do you call a, a, a dollar store. Uh, um, <laughs> what's, his, what's, what's his name? Uh, uh, oh, is it, was he on uh, uh, a true, true, Blood. True, 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 true Blood? Yeah, played Tarzan. Skarsgård? Oh, yeah, Skarsgård. Oh, Skarsgård. Stellan yeah. Scar, yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, Stellan's the dad. Um, what? There's like 15 of them I know, at this point. I know, we don't but, know. But, but yeah. we, you know who we're talking about. The ones about. that's yeah, not yeah, the yeah. dad, no, and the ones are not Pennywise. Yes, yes. Yeah, nailed it. Yeah. It, the, the the book plays them as almost like anthologies. You go from character to character. I, I, I got that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, that, yeah. That's, yeah that, that's the sense I'm getting. Like like mm-hmm. like when, by the time we get to episode four, which is very different than the others, and then the five, which is almost a standalone. I'm like, all right, this feels like an anthology. Yeah, but 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 has a running 
storyline is. Right. The main, book main is very much an, an, an anthology. Like I, it, it took me a while to. I'm like you. I'm like I don't know what the fuck is happening, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was just kind of confused by episode two. I was like, okay, I mean, I'm still kind of intrigued, but that, I just still was like, this one didn't sit well with me. But based on what, what you showed now, it's like okay, so all these are like di- playing with different genres, but mm-hmm. you have that one through line going through. It's like yeah. okay, then I'll give another chance. They really, they like they have episodes that are horror, sci-fi. Yeah. Uh, haunted house, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. Indiana uh, Jones, uh, yeah. adventure. Now all mm-hmm. to take on different things. Gotcha, man. gotcha, and, gotcha. Uh, and, horror. And, yep. Yeah, and the and the book yeah. is actually more set up like an anthology than okay. this. At least this is a little more episodic because you see how these characters interact uh, more than they do in the book. They all kind of come together at one point after their own adventures. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so these characters that you see right here, man, they they're very vague because you have to kind of. Figure out what their motivation right, is. Right, right. You gotta watch the rest of the episode. Yeah, so, I get you. yeah. Okay. So if it goes along, it looks like they're, they're done, but it's like, no, nah, they keep coming back and they keep being like sneaky and shit. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Just and especially her because <laughs> yeah. she starts getting, man, she starts pulling that, that white woman shit. It's like, you know what? <laughs> you you just can't go around talking to any kind of white woman like that. And it's like, all right, so you're gonna pull this shit. Fine. Go ahead. Especially magical ass white woman. <laughs> sneaky is the word because it still leaves you going. I don't know what your ultimate motivation is. Mm-hmm. What, 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 what game are you playing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess that's a, a lot of that, that's going on. And 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 you really don't. Uh, I can tell you right now, it's, it, it's 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 a slow reveal. I get the sense that there's infighting among the the villainous characters. So it's like, okay, mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as I was saying, man, you know, this is a uh, this is something where uh, uh, you know I'm. I'm looking at this and I have no idea where any of this is uh is going. Uh you know, I've, they've changed so much in the book. They they they've condensed some stories, consolidated characters, changed genders mm. on things. Uh characters uh uh don't last as long as they do in the book in some cases. It's like, "All right, I you got me. You know, this is about, about as as much of a surprise to me as anyone." Well, they'll be where, where they'll be going with this. I've already seen things was like, all right, you're staying true to like the main storylines of stuff, but small details. I don't know what the fuck is happening anymore myself. It's like people who read, you know, uh, uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, and then the shit just start changing, and people are like, all right, I I can't be that asshole no more. They're right. like, yeah. oh boy, <laughs> you you don't know what I know. <laughs> it's like he was saying, man. It's, it it moves fast. Look, people, if you get dropped in the middle of this and you don't know what's happening, I get it because. Uh, one moment they're talking about all this stuff like uh, like it doesn't exist. They're talking about this stuff like they like all these things yeah. you read in these books, and then it just happens, and they're not really that surprised by it. They just go with it. <laughs> there is kind of like a lack of reaction, which kind of bothered me. Yeah, I'd be kind of like, holy shit! Like they they need more of just a whoa, like what's going on? But you never really get that, especially in episode two. <laughs> yeah, they just no, really. They, they the characters are thrown in so fast. They're like we ain't got time to be like, oh, oh wow, shit, ghosts and creatures. It's like nah, we yeah. just rolling with it. Plus that the first episode when you've seen creatures, you're like, all right, so a lot of this stuff does exist. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. And they and they do explain why certain people don't have reactions mm-hmm. at times and whatnot. Oh, okay. And on top of that, they just got through almost being killed by racist white cops. I'm like fuck it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> These creatures ain't got shit on that. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, when they see white people, that's when they're like, oh, white person. <laughs> what would you think about the music? Uh, I I liked it for the most part. Although when they use the the music, that's very modern. It, it, that was the only thing that where it would take me out of it. That threw me off every time. It because they used so yeah. much that wasn't. So when they did, it was like. Mm. I, that kind of feels like I don't know if like obviously Jordan Peele is a producer on this, yeah, and I know yeah. he likes to use like variations of more modern songs and well, you know, make it horror horror versions of his songs and yeah. his, his trailers and films. But I don't know if that like that was his influence coming in here, but it didn't work for me. That, that felt awkward. Yeah, you know, I and really the 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 Jordan Peele and J.J. Abrams are going to be the ones getting a lot of you know uh, a, a lot credit. of credit for this, but really the credit goes to uh, the showrunner Misha Green. Misha Green is the one that actually is, you know, probably responsible for some of the things that you're yeah, you're talking about. Mm. I I was with you guys. Like I didn't like the modern music at first. And then I started seeing as you go along, and I don't know if you'll see it or not. Because if it, I do admit it's off putting, and I don't think yeah. everybody's gonna like it. Uh, I started seeing where they were like using modern music to kind of like show you like, hey, look, this is still kind of connected to what's going I, on. Today. I get that. I get that. You, you and know? like like by episode five, it it still wasn't a smooth transition for me but it was more like a 
I get it. Because they're doing, I mean, they're playing anything from Cardi B to Marilyn Manson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, blasting the, the, the Cardi B. It was just like, man, you're really taking me out of this. Yeah. Man. And I was deep in it. Yeah, Cardi B is so popular that it's kind of like, all right, you know, when you play that song and I'm, I'm, Kind of pulled out of this, but they did some other stuff that I thought was cool. If I, surprisingly, Marilyn Manson is the one that actually works the best yeah. when they're doing some creepy shit. Yeah. Marilyn Manson back there, uh, uh, it's like, all right, <laughs> so that kind of works. But they, you know, I saw what they were doing with the music, trying to like show you, like, hey, look, you know, we're putting in modern music to show you that these things that happened in the past are still relevant for today mm-hmm. because they did it with a uh, certain uh, uh, bits of more modern dialogue. Like James Baldwin and Gil Scott Heron. Right, right. Uh, you right. know, James Baldwin was even in one of the trailers that they played. What is reality? Shit, reality is getting the fuck out this house right now for a fossil. That brother was running. He wasn't even trying to run. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I mean look, a house is falling down behind you. It's nice to see somebody who's worried about the debris. I know, because Tom Cruise would have ran out that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Shit, that brother wasn't trying to be Tom Cruise. He, like, he, he ran out of that shit like Jerry Lewis. You see that shit? Like, I, 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 house is falling. <laughs> James Baldwin, mm-hmm. uh, big uh, uh, you know guy, big literature uh, guy that wrote a lot about racial issues. Uh, Gil Scott Heron. They played Whitey on the Moon. Yeah, that's one the point. title of that episode. Yeah, you see, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they, they play those, and it, I see how it works sometimes. It doesn't, it's not smooth all the time. Mm-hmm. I get you. I, yeah. With well, the one that I remember, it was not smooth, especially for a very kind of like, this is the finale, and, and they're playing like two guys talking to each other. That just felt really yeah. awkward to me. <laughs> it's supposed to be music. I was like, all right, wait, who's talking off screen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that threw who's me off. this Whitey? Where is he? Why is he on the moon? <laughs> uh, uh, the part that got me, it started playing the Jeffersons. I was like, all right, that's a little goofy right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's Ooh. a part. They, they go into a room. They have all these uh, clothes and this uh, 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 this uh, uh, extravagant food. And then they, they, they're trying to roll. like, moving on up, moving on up. And I was yeah. like, and, and my wife thought that was actually a gospel song. <laughs> She's like, do you listen to that that's in awesome. church? I was like, no, no, no. No, no, and, no. And there's no reason for her to not know that. No, exactly. I, mean, I, I yeah. think that. <laughs> That's a good gospel song. <laughs> yeah. It is catchy. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. I think it's very telling how this country still doesn't grasp racism present and past, mm-hmm. uh, given that we are starting to see all this stuff come out. And now genre entertainment, not just you know, not 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 that not, not these struggle movies, no, no. not these slave movies, but you know they're coming out in things now like Watchmen, Watchmen and um, Umbrella Academy. Um, yeah, exactly, Umbrella Academy, where you know superhero stuff now is touching on, you know, racism and police brutality, uh, uh, system uh, systemic racism, and the reason why I bring those up is because. All these things, including Lovecraft Country, th- that was made before George Floyd. I know yeah. the riots, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, man, you know it's. Uh, I think we're getting more of this entertainment that's I showing. Mean, you this. Gotta, you, you, those guys got to be patting themselves on the back for <laughs> their timing. <on> this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, wow, this could not have happened at a better time. I mean, excuse me for saying that. Yeah, but this is great for our properties. Yeah, it's true. Racism. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> It helps sometimes. <laughs> Good golly. <laughs> this is what bothers me. I wanted to bring this up earlier. There is a lot of, I, I call it word vomit. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of exposition. And they're throwing so many terms at you from uh, pulp you know, novels or, or Lovecraft and whoever else experimented with those uh, t- t- types of genres and novels that it, it just kind of goes over a lot of people. said, so even went over my head, and I, I like this kind of material. And, and, it, and who got lost in that episode to me was all the characters I like so much because they were just kind of non-reacting to all this word vomit that was being thrown in their face. I, I love this, but I get the criticisms that you're saying because yeah. I, I initially had that even just reading this. Mm-hmm. I was like, I do not. This is moving so fucking fast. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's happening. But maybe if I get like on that same beat that the show is going I, on, I, like, I can I, acclimate I, myself. I think you will because what okay. you said you like about the first episode, mm-hmm. that's pretty prevalent in the rest. It's just the, the second one, the, the first and second episode feel like they're all one thing. But from that point forward, they, it's like knowing that you got so much more to tell. Right. And, and the other episodes... You know, even while having the supernatural stuff in them, are very character driven as good, well. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Finds his pacing. Okay. I, I, you know, and I think some people don't have that experience like you. Like when I was reading this, I think people had been watching this. It's like it took me a while to realize even the structure. I was like, sure. I didn't know what was happening. I was like, now nah, we just switching different characters. Like, oh, okay, this is 
an anthology. And it took me a while yeah, to realize yeah. that. I think watching that is going to take a, 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 a few episodes. I love this, man. I love it. And yes, I'm a little biased because it's issues in there for me. But hey, they, I, I they, think they, outside of that, it's still because you know yeah. what? Because of the, the 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 Jim Crow, the racism, it gives something for your characters to have a purpose, so they already have more gravity to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's if it wasn't well done, if these characters weren't as well done. I mean, look, I, I, I would I would give this credit if they were telling a different story and the story was good and it pulled me in. It was done with all white characters, you know. Oh, I yeah. I would give it this. I would say the same thing that this is amazing, man. Yeah. I, I, so if I had to give this some kind of rating, it's a it's a major full price, man. Oh yeah, same I, here. I love this, love this right here. So you know, it's a great series. So I want to give a big thank you and a big fuck you too to H. B. Lovecraft. Hey man, it's too too bad. You know we had to have a fucking racist give us his entertainment right here because no matter how much we love it, his long head ass always gonna still be there. Behind it. Hey, but thank you, you bitch. <laughs> Uh, what would you? I mean, based on the two episodes, fairly, you know, what would you give this man? Right now, I give it a matinee. Matinee. I want. I want to wait until like see these other three episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I give it a matinee. For yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Love, lo- really loved episode one. Was kind of disappointed by episode two. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get you to finish the rest of it. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, Maybe when we in the season finale eventually. Yeah, check back in. Yeah, yeah. yeah see you